Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part two of my app settings video, where we're learning how to make configurable system settings and our own get setting and put setting functions in Microsoft Access. Today is part two, so what does that mean? If you haven't watched part one, go watch part one first. You'll find a link down below in the description. For the rest of you, here we go. Uh, one more prerequisite today that I forgot to mention in part one. Uh, go watch my is numeric video. This is uh, you can check a string value to see if it's got a numeric value in it. All right. So yesterday we created our setting table where we got our system settings in here. We've got our get setting function that we wrote right there to get a setting from the table. So we don't have to de look up it every time. Right. We set the get setting default for the state and for our order entry system so we can lock it. Right today, let's talk about using other data types like numbers. For example, we put a setting in here, right? Max family size is 20. Now, when this value gets returned by get setting, it's being returned as a string value. So we are in charge of converting that to the right data type. Let's say, for example, we want to use our family size, our max family size setting. Now, in order to check to see if this value is correct or not, we're going to put it in the before update event. The before update event runs when after the user types in the value, but before it gets committed to the table. All right. And of course, I told you last time to watch my before update video so you understand all that. So we're going to go to events and then before update dot 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 that opens it up. All right. Now we're going to retrieve the value, convert it to a long integer because that's what the family size value is. And then we can uh, compare the two. So we're going to need dim S as a string and L as a long. OK, now S equals get setting max family size. That's the setting in the table. But now it's stored in a string value. OK, so now we have to convert it over to a long. Now, if you want to check first to make sure it's valid. Because, you know, again, if you want to future proof against yourself, you could check to see if it's numeric, right? You could say if not is numeric s then and give yourself a warning here message box you know warning uh max family size is not numeric right cancel equals true and then end if uh and exit the sub here right exit sub so the user's kind of stuck at this point they really can't do anything because you messed up <laughs> the value that you put in the table isn't numeric or it doesn't exist if it returns an empty string. That's not numeric either, right? But now assuming you've got a valid value in that max family size, right? Now we can convert it. We can say L equals CLNG convert to long S. So now L has the number in there. So if it's 20, S is gonna have in it the number 20, but as a string, picture it in quotes, right? Now we've converted it to the number value 20. And now we can say if, family size is greater than L, then, now this is the error for the user, right? Message box, family size is too large, right? Max is, and then you can tell them what the max is, L, right? And here again, we'll go cancel equals true, exit sub, and if. Otherwise, it'll save the value, right? Let's put a little commenting in here, right? Get the value from the table check to make sure it's numeric and right here right convert to number and then check value against uh, what was entered all right comments are always good yeah it might seem rudimentary for you now but trust me three years from now 10 years from now i never thought i'd be using the same database for 20 years running my business but i, I am I, I'm still finding old code that I wrote 20 years ago that I'm like, what was I thinking? So th these comments, even if you're a solo developer, these are for future you, right? These comments are for you 10 years from now. So you can look at this quickly and go, okay, check it. Out. Okay. 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 I got it. All right. Trust me. And I don't always comment everything in my videos or my classes, but I try to you know emphasize for actual production stuff, put comments in. All right. So debug compile once in a while, let's close it. Close it, close it, save it, open it. 
All right, if I put a five in here, I'm good. If I put a 50 in here, I'm not good. Family size is too large, max is 20. Okay, so I come back in here and put in 19. All right, now let's check that other condition. I like to always check this kind of stuff. Let's say you were goofing around and you put in here an X, which is not numeric, right? So now if we try to put something in here, even if it's valid, family size is not numeric, that's a, a U fault. But the user now is stuck, they can't put something in there. So double check and make sure. You could you could also code in, like if it's not numeric, assume it's whatever, right? That's another thing you could do. You could say, if not numeric, then, or if this value is missing or whatever, right? If um, if not numeric, then we could say in here, instead of, instead of dropping the user out, we could say um, S equals, 20, you could hard code that, right? Like that, check to make sure it's numeric. If not, default to 20, which is hard coded. Or or if uh, if S equals blank, uh, or not is numeric, right? This way, if you forgot to put that value in, you're at least getting a hard coded 20 and the user isn't getting that error message. Whatever you wanna do, this is your database. I'm just showing you all the Lego pieces. You put them together however you want to. I'm just giving you options. All right, now this will be the same with Boolean values. This will be the same with date values. If you're returning a date value from your table, make sure you convert it to date. There's an isDate function. Check to see if it's a date first. And if it's a valid date, then use cDate to convert it to a date. Same thing. All right, I'm not gonna run through an example right now, but if you wanna see an example, post a comment down below. Let me know and I'll run through an example for you. If enough people are interested, right? Squeaky wheel gets the grease. Now let's talk about that uh, notes field, right? We've got the main menu notes, hi there. All right, I wanna put a notes field block right down here in the bottom of my main menu that people can type in notes, okay? Now the main menu form is just a generic menu form. It's not bound to a table, so there's no data in it, right? There's no records behind this form because there's no control or record source. Control source for controls, record sources for forms and reports right? You could bind this to a table, but it's, I don't like doing that with menu forms for lots of different reasons. But what I'm going to do is just stick a notes field down here and everybody can just type in whatever notes down here. You know, if you want uh, Sally to see the reminder for something, or you want uh, to just put in here that, uh, you know, we're, we're 86 ing mashed potatoes, whatever you want to put down here, right? All right. So I'm going to copy the status box, copy, paste, and I'm just going to uh, make this guy a little bit different in size. Let's do maybe like that. We'll slide it over here. We'll do something like this. Let's uh, make it blue. Here, hold on. There. I bring the bottom back up. I'm all about presentation, right? A, a pretty database with a nice interface is easier to use than something that's a cluster mm, with lots of weird colors. And it just it, presentation is a lot. All right, let's make it dark blue and we'll make the foreground color white and we'll make it a little bit bigger text so it's easy to read. Okay, and let's give it a name. Let's call it, oh, not filter, look up. I'll slide up to the top. There we go. Let's call it main menu notes. Okay, all right, save it, close it, close it, open it. Now, right now, and why do you move over there? Right now, this, you could type stuff in here, but it's not going anywhere. Right, and if you close it and reopen it, it's back to blank. Oh, I get it because I got I got code in my database that slides that over into a specific spot. So what we're gonna do is, first we're gonna look up the main menu notes that are in my main menu notes setting for the table. When are we gonna do that? When this form opens up. So design view, come into here, go to your events. Now I've already got an onload event in here. You can use onload or on open. It doesn't matter. All right, I've got the, this is the load app window position. This is for me. This is, it snaps it to a certain size and location on my screen for recording videos, which right now just happens to be slightly off center from the spot I'm actually recording in. But in here, all we have to put is uh, main menu notes equals get setting main menu notes, right? That's the setting in the table. It's called main menu notes. Let's double check that and make sure, right? Main menu notes, okay? So when the form loads, it's going to get setting main menu notes and stick that into the main menu notes 
text box that we just created, right? All right, save it, debug, compile, close it, close it. You're ready for my main menu to snap over again. And there we go, we got hi there in there. In fact, let me move things around real quick. I'm gonna move this over that. That's my recording window. Okay, so now it won't happen again. Now this is all fine and dandy. And as it is right now, you can use this just as a billboard. You can use this as like a manager billboard. You can come in here and say, you know, um, we're out of the Christmas special laptops or whatever. So it's an easy spot for you to put something in there so that when you open it up, the users will all see that system bulletin basically, right? And, and that alone is pretty functional. But if you want to allow people to be able to edit this, then all you need to do is be, allow them to save that value back to the table. Right, and to do that, we're gonna write a put setting function and we're gonna do that in part three. Now I know the slide says tune in tomorrow, but today, if you're watching these as they're being published, uh, this is being published Thursday the 18th of December, 2025. Tomorrow is Friday, so it's gonna be Quick Queries Friday. Uh, Monday the 22nd, we'll have part three. So tune in Monday, or if you're watching this at some future point, if you're a future boy, you can watch this right now because it'll be online. But if not, if you're watching it live, come back Monday. And members, you can watch it right now because that's part of the benefit of being a member is you can watch videos as soon as I make them and post them and then they're yours. Uh, but everybody else, I'll see you on Monday. But that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.